Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. That, that's great, that's great, okay. Good morning, um, and uh, thank you for in inviting me to speak at the Latin American Summit. I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, for those of you who remember me from last year, uh, I gave a talk on uh, mobile uh, devices and healthcare. I used to be director of Vi Device Sensor Mobility. You see, I've had a, a change in job, and things are very uh, constantly changing inside of our organization. Um, today I'm going to talk about our natural user interface thing, and the way Banco, I would say, went very deep, I'm going to talk very broadly about the area and the types of investments that we're doing in trying to push the envelope. Um, so, and I directly avoided your stuff, Benko, because <laughs> I knew you were going to speak. But I am going to touch on some other th talks that are going to be um, given in this room later today, and I'll invite you to, uh, to come and see those as well. So there are five themes uh, inside of our organizational structure in the connection team. And if you can think about Banco as being one of our internal researchers, we're sort of one of the external researchers. Some of us are researchers ourselves in our own right, but mostly what we do is we make connections with academics like yourself and create collaborations between you and the Microsoft Research Organization. And uh, in this case today, I'm mainly going to talk about uh, the natural user interface. So, um, what is natural? I mean, that, that's a, a very uh, interesting question, particularly given the, the talk that uh, Banco just gave on augmented reality. I mean, what feels natural to people? Um, and I think what we decided to do was uh, we decided that we inside of Microsoft have our own idea about what it is, but it would be better for us to convene a panel of experts. And so last summer, we actually invited a panel of 40 people to come that were both inside and outside of Microsoft to tell us what they thought was really the most important things in order to create more natural experiences. Because I think a lot of times we consider easy to use as uh, uh, the same thing as natural, but it isn't necessarily the case because if it's a reduced functionality, then it's maybe not so natural to the user. So what the experts uh, said to us is that you need to put the I in Nui. And so my, my colleague and I, Stuart Tantley, who is in the, uh, the team as well, um, you know, we're both in machine learning. He's a hardware guy. I'm a machine learning software, natural language processing person. So we really sort of miss that concept of, of putting the human inside of it. Um, because it's really about what you hear. It's really about what you say, what you see, what you think. But what we really forgot about, but I think is very important, is how do we understand what you feel? And so it, it's all about creating those kinds of experiences for you. So we also thought it was important not just to pull people in the academic community and inside of corporations, but we also decided what we should do is pull the public and put together a strategy for how we would invest in this area to make it a very vibrant research area for people to be working and going forward in the future. So when we talked to the public, and I'm going to use Brazil here as the sort of benchmark since we're in South America, but uh, when they were asked what they thought the impact of Nui would be on their lives, 74% of them thought that it would improve their quality of their life. Meanwhile, 71% of them uh, thought that it would stimulate their economy. Interestingly enough, in the United States, these numbers were exactly 84 and 81, 10 points difference. So perhaps Colombia is uh, somewhere in between, our, our, but I'm, I'm sure it's circled around the, these numbers very similarly. Um, but, uh, the, you know, being a, an academic myself, I always question surveys like this. So how did they define natural user interface and things like that? So it's hard to say. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that we, we discovered that there's really um, three things that it boils down to and, and that we really need to think very closely about. And one of them is really rethinking how people will interact with computers going forward, or technology in general. We can't really limit it to computers. It, it can be any kind of devices. And the other thing is to really rethink things like the materials that you're going to be interacting with, or more importantly, how things sort of disappear or blend into the background. 
Um, that's, uh, you know, it's very important for us to think about how to make these things ubiquitous and built directly into the environment so that they feel very comfortable to us. And the other thing is the, that it's important to think about how software, um, in particular uh, machine learning software, can enable our computers and technology to do things on our behalf. When we feel comfortable for them to actually act for us, they should be able to act for us. So you'll see that this actually, um, these three areas uh, boil down into this mission statement, but rather than read this, I'm, I, I think what I'd really like to say as a takeaway is it's very important when we work in these areas, uh, you know, I could read this boring mission statement, but more important is that when we apply things like natural user interactions, is that we apply them in a way that actually is valuable to people that is solving real world problems, like facilitating time to discovery in places like science, in education, and actually in healthcare as well. So how do we do that, right? We, we do it um, by extending the reach of our own researchers inside of Microsoft Research, by setting up strategic collaborations for them to work with external researchers. Um, the other thing that we do is we do a lot of development work inside of our team. We, we develop toolkits and SDKs and things so that people can go out and build their own. And as Benko was mentioning in his, his talk, uh, we put a lot of these things and make them available to you to, to download for free and utilize on your own. Um, and we like to really build up uh, a strong academic community in a particular space. So um, we go very deep into communities such as NLP so that we can actually reach a, a, a very close collaboration and, and strong alliance with uh, the communities that are working in these spaces. Everything from natural user uh, or uh, natural language processing all the way through even um, uh, the augmented reality. And then it's also important for us, I mean, I w it was a very uh, inspiring talk yesterday by the President of Colombia. I, you know, it's to work with people like him and his organizations and also other third-party organizations that fund research in this area and um, work with them to, to further research in this particular space. So collaborating with them uh, to, to ha extend our own reach. So you'll notice that these map to the three areas that I was talking about earlier. One of them is human-centric computing, and these are the major areas that we invest in. The other one is hardware, things like Connect, and then uh, software for Nui, such as the machine learning that I mentioned previously. And I'd like to give you a, a few examples uh, that are outside of Banco's area. <laughs> um, so you guys all know about Project Natal, which is now Connect. And you heard a whole lot about this yesterday from, from Rick, and he showed some really cool videos. So I'm, I'm actually not going to spend a lot of time on this slide in the interest of time, particularly since we lost a few minutes earlier. Um, but I think the thing that uh, I want to repeat that he said that's really the takeaway of this slide is that it's software that creates the magic. and so. Um, with Connect, it, what it really was is a very strong collaboration between the product team and also Microsoft Research. So they had a lot of the interesting hardware. Um, but what we did is we brought things uh, like computer vision to the table in order for us to, to use their 3D camera to create very uh, interesting and active experiences. And you'll, you'll see some more of that stuff uh, today as well. Um, I'm not sure you can actually see this, but, um, but the point is that uh, there's a lot of technology that went into this. Like even when I turned sideways, for instance, the Connect is smart enough to, add, to know where the joints are, even joints that are hidden, like my elbow, which is behind me. It actually has the ability to know approximately where that, that's at and estimate its location through machine learning techniques. And so um, there were literally, in order to develop this, uh, this is a hugely embarrassingly parallel problem, but it was very hard for us to paralyze it. I mean, because there were, mer there were over Million, there are millions and millions of parameters. So um, we had to actually develop our own new algorithm for doing parallel commuting with, with the Connect. Um, the, as uh, Benko mentioned, there is an SDK. We've announced it in February, um, and it will be available soon. And uh, this is the, the URL for it. Um, it uh, it's just uh, research.microsoft.com at connect.sdk. And what you'll get when you go there is this screen, only not green. <laughs> You'll get this, uh, and you can click on that subscribe button, and you'll find out, and it'll keep you up to date on, on how you can actually get it and get more information about it. And I highly recommend that you do that if you want to do development of, of that SDK um, on Windows. So one of the things before I roll into the examples is I, I want to um, just, you know, as researchers, <laughs> 
Okay, it's back. <laughs> I'm not green anymore. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Oh, no problem. Um, uh, so, um, it's really important for us to understand when, when we're being natural that technology is really just the raw material. It's the flour, um, not the bread. And sometimes even then, you know, if you think about that as bread being the application, sometimes that bread or the application is not really what's necessary. And I have to attribute these to Bill Buxton, who is uh, someone who works inside. He's our, and, uh, our new e guru inside of Microsoft Research. But you can see here, this is a person playing Connect, and that makes a lot of sense when I'm in my living room or in, in my... Uh, uh, game space, but when I'm on an airplane, that doesn't make so much sense. So <laughs> it's uh, it's really really important that uh, that you make sure that you consider when you're developing these applications when they might be relevant. And uh, Alex Cicero is going to be uh, not only at DemoFest, but he's giving a talk later today, and I'd like to encourage you to see him uh, this afternoon. He's going to be in this room, and he's going to be talking about a really cool application of Connect and speech recognition. Uh, so I invite you to join him and see that talk. But speaking along the lines of other things in my old uh, activities, um, uh, I'm also a professor of, in the College of Medicine at University of Washington. So. Um, healthcare is never far from me, <laughs> and so I always uh, care a lot about it. But a really appropriate uh, use of Connect you can think of is uh, you know making maintaining sterile conditions inside of of a, a surgical theater, and this is extremely important. This is a collaboration that we're doing with Addenbrooke's Hospital in the UK and with the University of Lancaster, and that's Antonio Criminisi, uh, that Mark Ronsfield is from Lancaster, um, and then Abigail Sellen. Uh, from our Microsoft Research Cambridge lab. What we're trying to do here is uh, it'll be a whole new way of measuring success. Uh, you know, we've measured success in publications and co-funding and things like that in the past inside of our team. But imagine measuring lives saved or the reduction of staph infections inside of patients who've received surgery that day. So it's, it's really a new frontier that we can use in medicine. And the nice thing about this is um, it takes input any kind of digital uh, visual data. So I wanted to show you this, uh, um, this video. It's going to be a little bit hard for me. I'm going to try and move that mouse up just a bit. But as you can see, what, they, what they're, we're able to do now is actually individually be able to move in and out of the space and interact with these things in 3D, so it makes a lot of sense. So if a physician, rather than trying to touch a keyboard where his hands might become unsterile, or what we found people to do is literally they wrap the, uh, their you know, coat over and try and knuckle the keyboard, and the keyboards are the dirtiest uh, place inside of your office, just so that you know if you're, you know, it's, it's the one thing you should clean very frequently. So it, it, being able to have somebody pull up a CAT scan of a brain, or here's kidneys in an aorta, and be able to interact with that in a 3D way is just amazing uh, and, and safe. Again, it, you know, reducing infections is a very important thing to do. So I'm going to pause that and uh, close it. So um, uh, another one that uh, you, you kind of got a flair for this, and actually Chris Harrison, who's working with Banco this year as his intern, is uh, uh, last year developed a really interesting project called Skinput, where I th and I think he showed this where you can actually uh, um, you can. Uh, you know, use it use it inside of your pocket. But this actually, instead of using a depth camera. Uh, it has a, a different uh, experience. It's actually something that you wear as a band around your arm. And it has a little Pico projector. So instead of that big depth camera on the shoulder, it literally has a little Pico projector. And it can pick up the sounds just by tapping, as Benko was talking about. This is actually how you pick that up. So I'll forward that up. To, I mean, here this guy's moving around, and you can still, uh, you know, interact directly with his with his phone. In this case, he's actually using an MP3 player, but he can interact with that directly uh, without having to, um, you know, stop moving or anything. It just it goes along with you, very mobile. So it's a it's a smaller form factor essentially of what Banco was working on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go on here. So. 
one of the other things that, uh, I, in fact, I invite you now to come to Demo Fest. Um, so I'm going to be demoing this, which is the Worldwide Telescope and, and the Connect system. Uh, so I'll just show you. Is it, can I have sound? Actually. Is there, can I get sound fully? Okay. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Universe with our fingertips. And uh, so we were really excited when... I'm, I'm just going to stick with When we first saw the Kinect, it became immediately obvious that what we wanted to do was to control the universe with our fingertips. And uh, so we were really excited when the SDK started the development to be able to do this. So this is Jonathan Bay. Microsoft Research, well. we've been working with uh, agencies like, the talk a bit. moves off into just a single pixel. The rest of the stars moving from the constellation positions that they you're familiar with and they're starting to move around in 3D. Now we're looking at that band of stars that was the Milky Way in our night sky is actually our home galaxy. And so we're now looking from the outside of our galaxy. But our galaxy I'll, uh, I'll let you guys come by and stop by the, the booth, and uh, I'll even let you play with it yourself. This is a, this is a live demonstration that I'll, I will have at Demo Fest tomorrow, which starts at 10 a.m. Um, uh, one of the other things that we've been working on, and this actually started out as a healthcare application, but is moving into a different space, is the active contact lens. So one of the things that we started to do was develop uh, uh, a lens with the University of Washington that you could put in your eye, and if you are a diabetic, what it would do is it would monitor your blood glucose level, and it would let you know by using little LEDs on it when you fell into a range that was unsafe. So it would tell you, you know, just whether it's green, yellow, or red, that depending on where you were in your perspective. So right now what people have to do is they actually have to prick their finger every single time to check their glucose when they have diabetes. This would completely eliminate the need for that. And if you think about it, the, um, you know, for kids, you know, young kids that are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, you know, being poked several times a day, this is extremely painful and, and it's hard for them. Um, so it's, it's nice if we can actually put something like that on a contact lens. But because of nanotechnology, we can actually break that down even further and go beyond just putting an LED on there, but actually start to put letters. So imagine like these heads-up displays that would fit on a lens that fits on your eyes. So not having to wear glasses, but literally be able to put a contact in your eye and be able to see things. Like things would pop up uh, as you walked inside of a grocery store that would be relevant to you. They would pop out at you. You know, things that are on sale on the shelf. So uh, you would be able to see and you, you, you know, you're maybe off to the side. You might have your shopping list as part of your uh, uh, of what you see on on the lens. So it's a, an, a whole new frontier with regards to what we can do with nanotechnology and putting it simply on the simple form factor of a contact lens that people are quite comfortable with putting inside of their eyes. Um, so let's see. The other one, this one is, uh, was just announced last week, um, and this is a, a, an exciting uh, project where uh, we can actually do near-field electromagnetic signals. So yeah, every one of us has our own unique electromagnetic signals, but we all have a, a, and we all have wires inside of our home, wires, telephone cables, all kinds of things that run through the wall. And so what this allows you to do is interact with objects in your home and use gesture, but not have to have, say, a connect or a depth camera. Instead, you wear a sensor on you. Right now, it's the size of a backpack. This is Disney Tan. He's, a, um, he's one of the main people. He and Shwetak Patel at the University of Washington are the two collaborators on this particular project. But you can see it's, it's the size of a backpack because he's got a laptop in his bag. But you don't necessarily have to have it be that size. And we're going to see about shrinking that down to a smaller size. But imagine interacting with objects in your home without having to have any, any kind of camera at all. You know, not a depth camera, not, not even having a projector. Um, and then 
uh, moving on to the software space, uh, one of the other areas that we're, we're investing in this year uh, considerably is actually how we break down barriers of language. And uh, Chris Vitt is actually going to be giving a talk later today. But right now, uh, recently we've released this widget where you could actually put a widget on your homepage and it would translate your homepage into some other language. Um, and we're working very hard on actually parallelizing this and making more languages available more quickly. Um, so that's another area that we're, we're trying to do because we really want to make sure that everyone has access to all of the content that's available online, particularly the deep web. Uh, things that aren't readily available but you, you can actually go deeply into like, like data sources and things like that for scientific discovery. Um, there's a, a, another talk also that's coming uh, in that same session, actually, he's, I think he's just preceding him. Yeah, he's just preceding Chris, uh, and it's on Gadgeteer. And this is a way that you can actually enable uh, kids to get interested in programming. Uh, this is a solderless type device connection, and what we've done is gone into schools, and there's a motherboard right here in the center. And you could just plug in different devices. This could be cameras, this can be uh, music players, these can be all kinds of uh, different types of devices. And, and uh, you know, people can create their own device automatically, and it's very simple to program. But uh, like I said, uh, so Nicholas is going to cover that in, in greater detail today, so I'm, I'm not going to steal his thunder. So I, I just want to leave you with a, a few conclusions um, that, that I feel are important in this, uh, by investing in this particular space. Um, I believe that natural user interfaces can change the face of computing and technology as we know it today. I, it, it will change the world that we, that we live in. And I really think that it's going to make our lives safer, healthier, and, and better overall, just because things will be able to act on our behalf and, and work for us um, and alleviate some of the things that, w that we don't want to have to do. So I wanted to just say, you know, welcome to the brave Nui world. And uh, I thank you for your attention. Uh, and I'll take any questions if you'd like. Okay. opportunity of listening to you in Brazil. It was great and, and I see that things are going on and uh, uh, I would like to know if there is a uh, there is a possibility of getting in touch with the uh, medical people and follow their work with Kinect. Uh, I would be very interested because we have something with Microsoft in Brazil and FAPES with Microsoft in Brazil in hospitals. So I would like to know if it's possible. Yeah, no, I, it's, uh, it's essentially what, what our role, our responsibility in the Research Connections team is, is to make connections between you and those people. And I'm more than happy to put you in touch with Antonio Criminici and Abigail Sellen, who are working on that project, so that you can, you can work with them uh, directly. Uh, so no problem at all. In fact, that's, that's really the point. Okay. Well, if, if there are no more questions, I, I'm perfectly always happy to, to wind up early and uh, give people a little bit of time because I know it's a very packed schedule. So maybe this will give you a nice break. Thank you very much for your attention.